Uh, my name is Charles Soule. I write for Marvel Comics and my own stuff. I've worked for DC in the past. I do a whole bunch of books, and uh, it's a great time. The, the way that the, the Star Wars books all work is that they're, they're very open about ideas. So, so you, you pitch an idea, you bring it to them, and then it goes to something called the Lucasfilm Story Group. Uh, and, and their job is to make sure that whatever story you want to do fits into the larger continuity of all the Star Wars stories. So that's the movies, the TV shows, comics, novels, you know, coloring books, anything else. I sort of looked around at a bunch of different characters, and the two that I, that I was really interested in at that time were um, Lando, obviously, and, and the Emperor, Palpatine. Just for various reasons, it sort of made more sense to do the Lando story, and I'm glad it did because it, it, it let it it let it breathe in a way that I think might have been a little bit trickier to do with an Emperor story, simply because his, his backstory is, is less explored, as I mentioned before. I mean, Lando, as a character, isn't in the original trilogy all that much. He's only in it for maybe 15 or 20 minutes of screen time, and Lobot even less. And so the, it was almost wide open as far as what I, what I could develop for them. We have a little tiny bit of backstory from things Han Solo says, but not much. So, uh, you know, Lucas was really open to the idea of, of me taking that possibility and running with it, which was a blast. You also can't forget Alex Maleev's art on the series, which is, you know, absolutely perfect and palm mounts on colors. Like, the, the three of us really, I think, clicked to make something that feels very uh, coordinated and, and all of a piece, which is great. I mainly knew him, his work from, from his Daredevil run, which I loved, with, with Brian Michael Bendis. And, and I was a little, I just didn't know what to expect uh, from, from an Alex Maleev Star Wars series, uh, Alex Maleev sci-fi at all. Uh, and then pages started coming in and I was like, oh, okay, I, should, I, should have, I shouldn't have worded it all, that was a mistake. Uh, and then when Paul Mount started to drop the colors in and it, it had that kind of hyper intense, almost technicolor approach to it, which again, nobody really saw that coming, but it works so well for that series. So I'm, I'm really happy with it. So next month, uh, the first issue of my Obi-Wan and Anakin series comes out, which is the next of my Star Wars uh, miniseries that, that will be happening with Marvel, which I'm very thrilled about. It should be fun. The Obi-Wan and Anakin series is set between Episode 1 and Episode 2, so it's during the time when uh, Anakin is still at the Jedi Temple. He's been there for about three years or so, three or four years at this point, so he's roughly like 13, um, and Obi-Wan has been training him for all that time. So they go on sort of a big adventure, um, but it's it's... Psychologically, they're both at a point where they're asking a lot of questions about their relationship and, and Anakin's job as a Jedi, what it's going to be, you know, what it means to be the chosen one, things like that. So it's, um, I, I tried to tell a story that will feel important and resonant for their relationship. Um, and it's, it's set in that interesting prequel era, uh, which hasn't been that explored in, in the comics, really. And, and this particular era, the, between episode one and two, I don't think we've seen very much storytelling from that at all. So, you know, the Jedi were still at their height. Um, there's you know, a lot going on in Coruscant at the time. Uh, Palpatine is Chancellor, he's not yet Emperor, so there's a, there's a lot of neat stuff. The interesting thing about watching the prequels again, specifically for this Obi-Wan and Anakin series, was that there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of really interesting storytelling there when you're, when you're looking at writing a story about these characters at this time, and, and the, the development of both of them between episode one and episode two. Um, I mean, Obi-Wan is still a Padawan in, in episode one until the very end, uh, and you know, by the time Episode Two rolls around, Attack of the Clones rolls around, he clearly has this pretty developed friendship with with Anakin. They've had a lot of stuff going on. There's that nest of Gundarks line. There's things like that. I haven't felt you this tense since since we fell into that nest of Gundarks. <laughs> you fell into that nightmare, Master, and I rescued you. Remember? And so, while the nest of Gundarks does not appear in my series, which I'm sure everyone will be very sad about, clearly there's a lot of ground to be covered between this nine-year-old little boy and this sort of fairly confident. Um, you know, 18-year-old or whatever he is, roughly, in, in episode two. So, um, you know, it's always, it's always fun to, to look at the stories and figure out where, where your story is going to fit in to them.